welcome to yet another edition of Time Pass for the New Indian Express. I have with me the wonderfully uh, talented and so varied in his career, uh, Saif Ali Khan. Saif, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Saif has been a real treasure for the past, what, 27 years. It's quite amazing. He's uh, uh, entertained us across genres, or, uh, across uh, platforms. Uh, he's reinvented himself, I don't know how many times and has always uh, been just uh, so delightful to watch on screen. Thank you so much for joining us, Seth, and for being a voice, uh, a very sober and sane voice in these very trying times. Um, how have you really negotiated this whole period? Uh, first, of course, uh, I have two messages for you, Seth. I'm sorry, I've not even given you a chance to speak. One is to congratulate you on um, uh, Karina Kapoor's uh, 20 years in uh, cinema. And two, to congratulate you for being uh, Temu's dad. So that's out of the way. Well, I mean, the former had absolutely nothing to do with me. And the second <laughs> one wasn't very difficult to produce. It was quite a pleasure, in fact. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> But really, Seth, you've been uh, such a remarkable actor and you've uh, reinvented yourself so many times. Um, uh, what have you been doing these last three months? Have you been reading, watching cinema? What have you been doing? Um, ask me, what have I been doing the last three months? My God, it's yeah. been literally... Um, well, we try and make some kind of a routine uh, which has slightly collapsed recently. I think we need a new routine. But yeah. reading... Uh, I think the most special thing has been spending some quality time with young Temur. Um, yes. And because one of us is usually traveling or working and in the lockdown, you know, we've really had a chance to be together uh, without any of us going anywhere, which I think is, has been the most special part. Apart from that, I've been playing quite a lot of guitar and trying to improve that and um, reading uh, a lot and um, practicing a bit of language skills. Just, I, I, I thought that we shouldn't lose this time. Um, and I mean, there's a certain amount of time you get for personal things in life, at least I do, yes. in between work yeah. and family. So the way I'm looking at it is, let's say that we've got all the time now, you know, so yeah. we shouldn't waste it. And when this is over, we shouldn't feel that, okay, I didn't do any of those things, right. you know? Seth, you um, read a lot of history. I know you read a lot and you read a lot of history as well. Um, what what does history teach us about the times we're living in now? Well, Have I we mean, been here before? Yeah, I think we've been here many times before and all kinds of things have happened in the past, actually probably much worse than this. Uh, so, you know, the things that come to mind are things like the plague, the Black Death. Yes. Um, right. In fact, one of the things I was reading was it's a book called the decameron um right sorry um where which is actually an italian book which is uh it kind of came before chaucer and it was a new style of kind of writing where they would have um uh you know they they, they have sort of 10 people who are taking refuge from the plague in a villa in italy um and right. to pass the time they tell each other stories uh, so that is the format of the book. And they're actually in quarantine, these people, while they're entertaining yeah. themselves. So I thought it was quite interesting to be reading that. Um, there's also things like The Thousand and One Nights, um, yeah. which is another kind of a, a desperate um, situation where story a woman is... Yeah. Where she's trying, she's trying to buy time. So she's telling yeah. a story that is holding a, you know, her potential murderer's interest. Um, right. night after night after night so which is a, a quite you know similar to how I'm feeling so I thought that would be an interesting thing to read um, and and things like this so I think historically uh, and then there's been memoirs of people who've been imprisoned um, who managed to create some kind of a a, a timetable you know uh, to, to keep themselves sane um, whether it's telling stories and, and in many ways we're very lucky because we can divide our time um, in different ways. You can be a little academic, you can be creative, you can read the mm. things that you've always planned to read but never had the chance, you know, um, and you can learn things and the internet is so amazing. I mean, you can 
you know, brush up on some language, like I said, or you can do many, many things. I think the trick is not to think about too much about the past and not to think too much about the future. But if you take every day as it comes and just, you know, try and do what you enjoy, uh, there's actually a lot to be done. I mean, we've been gardening. We don't even have a garden. We've got a tiny little balcony with a few flower pots on it. But we've been growing things on that. And, uh, you know, I've been cooking a lot every evening. I actually prefer the evenings, I'm sorry to say, yeah. to the mornings. <laughs> because every evening I try and cook something. Okay. Um, and what I, I really look forward to that? that. Oh, everything. I've got quite a wide repertoire now from, you know, we've done biryanis on, you know, with layers. Um, and, you know, I've done ch a little bit of Chinese stuff, like lo mein and... Um, yesterday I cooked an Asian fish in kind of salmon and soy sauce. So wow. various amounts, uh, you know, there's a healthy chicken. Um, there's some vegetarian food. There's a lot of stuff that uh, I've been cooking every day for about 90 days. So um, I've gotten better at it. But uh, actually you've been a chef on screen as well. Possibly one of the first chefs we had uh, in Salam Namaste, right? That's uh, right. Yeah, uh, I think in that uh, at that time it was so unusual to have uh, the kind of professions that you had, say, in Hamtum. Of course, you were a cartoonist. We've had cartoonists before, but you were a chef. Then, of course, you played a chef again. So, uh, you know, this amazing ability you have to transition from rom coms to uh, Omkara to Ek Hasina Thi. Uh, how, of course, you're an actor, you can do it, but it was exciting times. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it, it's really nice working. Someone like Siddharth Anand back then was always trying to, you know, do something new. There's a lot of right. energy with, with filmmakers. I mean, it's one of those professions that has uh, a drive uh, where people are trying. I mean, they're aware of what's happening in the world and they're aware right. of what's happening in India. And they're trying to, uh, you know, somewhere marry those, those ideas. And it's quite exciting because a lot of people I speak to have very fresh ideas and have had fresh yeah. ideas constantly. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, it's great. I mean, you know, all credit to them for coming up with, and and to us as a film industry to to be able to do you know a film like Salam Namaste and film like Omkara and all is um, is lucky. And I think that scene in Love Archkal will go down in post posterity where you're crying in front of the fire. I think it's, again, one of the few scenes where you actually see a man breaking down on screen and, um, you know, not being sort of too tied to the idea of being a, you know, a ma ma macho man. Well, I guess maybe that's been some kind of contribution um, where, you know, I've had a chance to play slightly more... Um, you know, human, normal uh, characters who, who are more vulnerable and yes. perhaps not as invulnerable or super successful or kind of slightly uh, normal kind of guys. Um, so mm. if, if that's, you know, lent a little bit of something to a pop culture, then great. Yeah, it has, I think. And I think, um, um, uh, Seth, uh, it's also been very interesting over these past three months in a way you've been involved with the two biggest issues we've had uh, you know you're uh, acting in uh, Shushant Singh Rajput's last film uh, um, and uh, you were the, uh, the the quieter one on the couch when uh, Kangana Ranaut uh, called out Karan uh, for this so-called uh, uh, nepotism uh, so I can't not uh, ask you uh, about uh, those two issues how how is it working with Shushant uh, uh, in Dil Bechara? Uh, and then we come to... Uh, well, I thought, I thought Shushant <laughs> was a very uh, talented actor and um, very nice, you know, good-looking guy. And I yeah. thought, I thought, you know, that this kind of... In fact, I thought about him generally that if I was producing a movie and he did a film with my partner, ex-partner, Dinesh Bijan. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Who probably shouldn't have directed him, but but did. Yeah. Um, and uh, he was very, uh, you know, I thought this is, you know, a really bright kind of future because he seemed to have everything. I mean, you know, he was a, he looked very, very good and he was talented and he'd been very successful as well in his career. So when I, when I came across him, he was very polite and very nice because uh, I was doing a guest appearance in his movie 
and the way things are in, in the business, they weren't actually getting an actor very easily to just come in and do a guest appearance. I think people tend to think a lot about doing something like that, you know? Um, uh, and there's, I think our generation, there's a few of us in, in my generation who really wouldn't think too much about uh, helping out sometimes. Uh, and I think he appreciated that. So he was really nice. Um, and we met in Paris. That's the only time I've really met him. But he was warm with me ever since. And I'd met him a couple of times after that. And of course, he worked with Sarah. Yeah. But my experience of him was uh, someone really supportive and nice. And, you know, he seemed very bright. And um, he was being, you know, he was, he was being very nice to me. And he wanted to come over and have a chat. And he said, there's many things he'd like to talk to me about, like astronomy and philosophy. But I, I got the feeling he was a bit brighter than I was. So I'm not sure what <laughs> philosophy we would have discussed. <laughs> and, um, oh, you know, what do you think of the backlash against Karan Jor? You've been someone who's worked with him quite closely. And I think, again, Kal Ho Na Ho was quite a remarkable film uh, for its time. Uh, we possibly didn't appreciate it uh, completely. You know, um, I had absolutely no idea what Kangana was saying on Coffee with Karan. That's why I was so shocked because, yeah. I mean, I think if you come onto a show, and if you've got an agenda prepared to kind right. of, um, you know, take the host down, um, I, my mind doesn't work like that. So I, I, I don't understand. I mean, you know, if I, um, so I was a little surprised, obviously. Um, but these issues have absolutely nothing to do with me and I tend to find myself in the middle of them. So maybe I should think yeah. a few times before commenting. Uh, but as far as Karan goes, I mean, I think somehow he's made himself uh, this very large symbol, you know, yeah. and, and that symbol, and since he's put on so many different hats and he's been in so many different places, um, it seems that like what happens to symbols sometimes, he's attracting, you know, um, a lot of flack uh, for that. Now, whether it's all deserved or, or not deserved, I'm sure it's not all deserved. Um, the, it's, it, these, the truth is always very complicated, you know. Yeah. Um, there's much more to it. And if, and, but unfortunately, people aren't interested in the truth. They're just interested in symbols. And there's a symbol for something, and he just happens to be at the moment a symbol for something that is not very popular. Um, yeah. I hope that tides over, and I hope the better things that he is known for, um, primarily for being a filmmaker and a very successful producer, these things shine through, and that that is ultimately what um, he should be known for, and I'm sure will be known for. But I don't know. I'm th I'm, these are very turbulent times, you know. Like, uh, there's been, I think what it is, is uh, we haven't had a revolution, you know. Yeah. A lot of cultures that I'm famili familiar with or that I've read about have had very bloody revolutions. I mean, for example, the French Revolution was something that really took the matter of privilege and, um, and um, people who are deserving um, and kind of nepotism, if you will, to another level and really slaughtered the aristocracy on the streets, you know, and the, the reign of terror. So, and then later on, everyone calms down. So, I mean, I, I think nations also can, you know, um, tensions and feelings can, and inequality particularly, and there's so much inequality in India, can lead to a kind of situation where it needs to explode. And if it's not exploding violently, uh, then it needs an outlet. And, and maybe a social media outlet is actually far more polite and far less, um, you know, barbaric, even though it's a pretty uh, volatile environment, um, than a genuine revolution, you know. Um, but I think it's a similar feeling that would normally lead to a revolution. And I think it's a yeah. very unfair situation in our country because the, the gap between, and not just in our country actually, all over the world, the gap between people who are wealthy and the people who are not getting a paycheck is, is just increasing. Um, and and, the, and so that's one thing and that's, a, that's an issue that is there. Nepotism is something completely different. There's many levels also to nepotism. I mean, whether it's favoritism, whether it's campism, people like to work with people they're comfortable with. Is that a bad thing? Nepotism in its purest form, I mean, is something that even I've been a victim of, but nobody's interested in that. I mean, businesses yeah. work like that. You, some, I, you know, I'm not going to take names, obviously, but 
you know, somebody's dad has rung up and said, you know, don't take him, take him in the movie. And all that happens. Um, it's happened to me. So uh, I don't know what to say. I'll say that more than ever, I'm really happy to see so many um, kids from, you know, the Institute, from NSD, from, from the Film Institute coming to the foreground. I've worked with people like Nawazuddin. You know, I'm seeing people like Pankaj Tripathi becoming such um, yeah. household names with the work they've done. So, and I've heard Shushant, who probably shouldn't be dragged into this, uh, say himself that yes, nepotism exists. And yes, there are a lot of people who also um, have made it through their own steam. Um, and I think that's a struggle that will be ongoing. And as long as people continue to get a fair chance, um, that seems to be the way of the world. But I really think it's not okay to give people you know, from certain backgrounds, um, chances over people who have more talent. So, okay, so, you know, I'm, I, I hope I'm not rambling, but the ugliest no, no. thing in nepotism is when somebody who is talented and has yeah. ability is replaced uh, due to nepotism by somebody who isn't as talented and isn't as, uh, um, I, have, I, I have no explanation for that. I'm sure that's happened sometimes. Um, and I, I, I'm pretty sure it'll happen less and less. And I'm sure it happens in every department um, of the country. And it's just one of those things that a developing nation has to deal with. Where I mean, the existence is a constant struggle. At least society and history show us that we're constantly struggling with trying to change preconceived notions, you know, whether it's racism that has to be questioned. Attitudes are questioned yeah. all the time. And, and these are areas that need fixing. And I'm sure with, um, you know, argument, with um, dialogue, and with, you know, demonstration, um, there will be some kind of good change coming out of it. I mean, it's certainly become um, a burning issue that is, uh, but I already see, I see in, in Indian films and in, in our movie industry, a, a huge wave of, of so many uh, actors. I mean, all these uh, young top actors, you know, who've come up on their own steam rather than have um, godfathers or fathers yeah. backing them. You know, I'm very and happy to see that. Yeah, and the directors and the writers, they're bringing in a completely fresh idea of storytelling from very different parts of India as well. I mean, India is, 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 is not a very old independent nation, you know, I mean, of right. course, we're incredibly old, the soil of this country, I mean, I always say, like, that's, I think the cow is a perfect symbol for us, like, I've driven in Rajasthan, and you just see this peaceful animal that seems to have seen yeah. it all, you know, it's seen it all, <laughs> and it's, right. it's watching it as, as, it's like a natural speed breaker, because people who drive fast and <laughs> on the highways have to slow down and kind of, anyway, um, uh, Interesting. That's possibly one of the reasons why it's worshipped as well. I don't know. I don't know. I, absolutely. I think it, I, I, I spent a lot of time looking at cows in, on my time <laughs> in Rajasthan. And I thought it to be a very beautiful, very peaceful, very wise looking animal, you know, who's seen everything come, you know, empires rise and fall and all this kind of thing. But as a political entity, um, you know, 1948 is not that long ago. So a lot is adjusting. And there's been an attitude and a, probably a colonial attitude that, you know, Indians are a certain way and Virat Kohli and his cricket team has kind of shrugged that off on the sporting field. I mean, there's many other players like, you know, um, Miss Sandhu, etc. I mean, there's, I don't want to get into naming everyone, but we're changing our own image in various ways. And even politically, um, we're changing our image and there's a lot of, lot of things happening. So it's an extremely turbulent time. Um, so... Right. It's and, and it's an exci exciting time, you know, because this is what leads to development. Right. And um, uh, Saif, when you look around at the stories that uh, come to you, especially you were possibly one of the first big stars to take to, uh, 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 you know, the OTT platform as it's known. Uh, what attracted you to it? The long form, the leisure of storytelling, the, the way the character could develop. Uh, the slowness of things. No, I mean, it, it's a, it is a gen, well, okay. The idea behind Netflix is to change, 
it's a very revolutionary idea actually what they what historically and uh, traditionally we have been yeah. taught that the smaller the screen you know the smaller the paycheck the smaller the idea and the yeah. smaller the whatever you know and unfortunately yeah. um the entire infrastructure the even the psychological infrastructure that goes along with it changes you know um yeah. and it's not as good so it's it's probably better to be in movies is what we've been told um but that i think netflix completely wanted to challenge that that no you could have a better viewing experience on your phone yeah. or at home than you could in the theater and therefore they spend money and money is the key they spend hmm. money and they have talent writing and they have talent acting and before you know it you've got a big budget thing happening on a small screen so that's a revolutionary idea um and it's changing the fact that we've got all these digital appliances like phones and computers everywhere um to create content for that seemed just like a really nice platform like how an actor would do a play uh you know in a theater or would do a film for the screen you would do something for the web um and all of them should be slightly different in terms of content like you said uh ideally the web should probably be a long form kind of story where you could get into a saga for example like let's say the mughal empire or the story of you know um the east india company or something like that with proper costume drama um you know taking your time to tell a story and when netflix offered it to me and uh i i mean i've been watching netflix shows and i knew that narcos you know was this global phenomenon and when they hey. so they tried you know when they came to india and said we want to make an original series it's not something they do very often um yeah so it it it, it, it had all the right things to it you know a, a female actor a co-star of mine told my manager that oh self doing television now you know um because they didn't get it yeah. it's not television it's uh, a streaming service for a, a platform that that is a revolutionary platform so yeah. i mean it was a no brainer doing it it was one of the best experiences of my life because everybody working on it was trying to be clever i mean yeah. very often sometimes if you're in the right movie and you're doing the right thing that if you do a movie like tana ji and you're working with that director is trying to be um you know as creative with his computer graphics and his largeness yeah. of story so you feel you're at, at the edge of something the cutting edge of something but sometimes when you do mass cinema you're not trying to be clever you're you're trying to be yeah. understood by as many people as possible which is different you know here you were just trying to be as as technically emotionally like as an actor um you know as clever as possible and that's such a good feeling for a human being who's who's an actor the sacred games 3 is coming up i don't know i don't know i think the story who knows it's a lovely character i i would love to revisit it um you know if somebody offered me a if netflix offered me a part as sartaj singh again i'd be very happy to do it i could do it really well because i'm quite familiar with it yeah and um, whoever thought you'd be playing a sardar you've already played uh, this uh, uh, sort of rural uh, up guy in omkara but playing a sardar was fun i loved the way you d- uh, dug into the parathas <laughs> no i really enjoy playing a sardar for many reasons um hmm. and the one of the reasons is i think the turban looks amazing you know um <laughs> and you I, were one in love article as well of course the first time yes part. but that was the first yeah. time and this is something i actually lived for much longer um yeah and by the time the second season rolled around i think i'd really grown into it and uh i mean it, it looks it looks really good you know so you feel yeah, you know slightly slightly regal anyway with that um turban on your head um and of course it's actually really uh in the heat it's a nice thing to wear because it kind of stops you sweating and it's quite it's actually quite cool so okay. i really enjoyed it um very much i think it looked great i yeah. when i see that piece of film i really don't look like myself and that's yeah. always nice you know when you're like okay i i can no longer see me I finally I checked out and this is the character. Has that happened to you very often? No, but it does happen once in a while which is something. I mean apparently it happens to Al Pacino all the time, but 
it ha it happens sometimes. It's a, it's what it's where you're trying to get as an actor, and you can see it, and you can see it. I can see it on screen, and then sometimes you're like, okay, great, now I've gone. And the idea is to you know practice and rehearse so that the quicker you get out of there and the character takes over, the better. Um, but it happens. It's happening more and more these days. Yeah, I think uh, in Lal Kaptan, I felt that in Lal Kaptan as well. Well, Lal Kaptan is a really nice effort and I'm proud I did it. And I think my wife deserves yeah. an award for like letting me go for six months to play, you know, silly buggers in Rajasthan with that bunch of people trying to make cinema. Like Deepak Dobriyal also, I mean, gave his life and soul to that. Really impressive performance from him. And Navdeep's kind of like a one-man show. I feel now right. I wish the film should have been a little more like a superhero kind of movie than a Western. We should have really approached it as a different genre, but I wanted to do a Western. I love Westerns. And I had a really good time doing it uh, with him. He's great. It was, really, it was a lot of fun. Very difficult to kind of try and make that character convincing for me. I've never had so much stuff on. Um, but after doing it, uh, I understood what period films are. I understood that every bit of, um, you know, costume kind of tells a story so you need it um, and I also developed a tremendous amount of patience having makeup done for a couple of hours uh, I've never done something like that before I know people have done prosthetics it's something yeah. I, I don't look forward to much but to do it every day and just kind of tune out um, and 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 live that role in that film I mean I came back as a slightly different person it was you know six months yeah. and then yeah I, I, people used to tell me I'm looking different while, while it was on. So it, some, some of these experience, experiences change you, you know. Change, yeah. So uh, it's hard to believe that you're going to be 50 this year. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, I think I, I look a lot like my mother and I have a lot of her genes, um, obviously, I think, uh, which probably means I might inherit some stomach issues as well but because but, um, of course all Bengalis have that yeah really yes well, I can Bengali. take a but, vouch for but, it but, but mum uh, Amma looks very young and she yeah. you know when she was 50 I think she looked like in her late 30s yeah so that's a brilliant gift thank you mummy for, for an actor <laughs> especially a Hindi yeah. film actor where yeah. youth and beauty is probably paramount but you know, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, you know, you remind me more of your dad. I, I've had two conversations with him in your duplex lane uh, house. Yeah. Uh, and he, in fact, he used to wear a kurta pajama pretty much like you. Yeah. And uh, in his library, and I think he was again, one of the finest readers of history literature I've ever known. And he would never talk about cricket. It would always be about <laughs> Uh, the books uh, he'd read. And he would never talk about himself. Uh, he was no, such a fine man. It would be difficult to engage him in conversation, but if you got him talking about something he liked, then it was great. He was a very reticent yeah. person. He, did, he didn't need to talk. So it was one of those people, mm. you know. They, they say as an actor that you only talk when you want something. So he right. must have been very satisfied because he didn't say much. But he would, he loved to talk about books. I think he, he was uh, perhaps uh, a storyteller in many ways, which you inherited as well. I think he could have you done a lot of things. I think, I think he would have been a nice actor as well. He looked <laughs> like Al Pacino. Oh, he did. He did. For sure. But um, have you come across anything recently that you would like to turn into uh, something that you'd like to watch? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, like I, 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 mean, I, I keep thinking a saga on the Mughals yeah. would be quite interesting to kind of reinvent that space. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and of course, there's the old ideas of the Mahabharata or the Ramayana. I, I, right. what, what excites me most creatively, I think, is um, I don't know if it'll ever happen, but to take something that you're not even thinking about as being a cliched view because that's the only way you've ever seen it you know, and to reinvent right. that somehow. For example, right. to do, like you've got a certain image of what the Ramayana should look like. You yeah. know, like if you did that again, um, and and just, you know, with, with the costumes and the treatment and the kind of thing, just tweaked it so that it becomes um, somehow 
uh, appealing to young kids in in that way, you know. Um, as long as you're not, as long as you're not pilloried for it, because that could be a sensitive subject. Ma, yeah, is more political and less religious, I think. No, I think it's they're all. I think they're all religious and political. You'll get in lots of trouble. Depends who makes it. You'll have to get somebody huh. who's quite connected. There are people yeah. who, you know, who are. You get some nice connected person to do a, a, and then you have to get it right. Or then you do a bahubali. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying that these are things. You're saying, what would you do? I, yeah. Which are the books that be so Mahabharat, Ramayana first, you know, in a in a web show that would be. Um, something on the Mughals, maybe something in the East India Company, maybe um, anything that would be some sort of saga. There's so many books, actually, that would lend themselves to. I was thinking of Anarchy, which would be perfect for you. Uh, exactly. I, I don't know yeah. if you've read it. Yeah. I, have read, I have read it. Yeah, I'd love okay. that. Yeah. But of course, uh, we're also talking of uh, um, uh, Mughal uh, saga, which Karan is making currently. That, uh, uh, hopefully yeah. that will turn out to be interesting. Uh, yes. But but it's tough, isn't it, uh, Seth, to make something that is not uh, immediately, uh, that a political motive is not immediately attached to it. It's tough Listen, in this environment. I'm saying in like in India is quite a, a mix of people. Um, and I, you know, I don't know. I think we should not be too quick to judge. Um, uh, what what's happening in the sense that you know you might like some depending on your upbringing depending on your schooling and your and your your religion or who you are you might have a different take on so many things you know and that's how the world works but um, I think the way things are going um, I I'd be very happy as an actor to work with people like for example you know uh, the people who make Tanaji um, yeah they really caught the spirit of the the nation when um when you tell a story like that an unsung hero an unsung kind of maratha warrior um yes. I, so if you work with people who, who tell those kind of stories as an actor if you're being offered parts then rather than have your own version of of uh of things it's nice to you know be able to work with them do you know yes. what i mean you don't necessarily what have I'm saying to is with the leave politics the historicals. of everything. Yeah. yeah, and leave the historicals to the people who understand the nation, at least yeah. in cinema, you know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and in a way, um, it's also uh, the times, as you said, that we're living in, where um, retelling our stories has become very important. But how we retell them is the important thing. Well, this is the thing. I mean, you know, there's a certain history we've been taught. We've been taught by the yes. English, you know, yes. and we've been taught a colonial sense of history. And that's why, again, I say, um, I mean, I said something about history and Tanaji and it all got misconstrued because oh, yes, nobody really understood daughter, what I was saying. Yeah, um, it was such what, a controversy. What, what I am trying to say about, about that whole thing is that history is, it depends who you speak to about the history and it's time we told our own history. It's time we told our version of things, you know, as, as Indians. And that is the time we're at. And it's a very nationalistic time. And it's an exciting time. Yeah. And it could be diverse. And it should be diverse. That's the beauty of India in a way, isn't it? I mean, even if you see the films that are running, people are liking things like biopics about, um, you know, true yeah. stories about success stories or whatever, um, stories about uh, unsung heroes of India, you know, that's, uh, that's a heading for it. I believe Ajay Devgan is planning to make lots of films like that. It's a very good idea because that is the spirit of the nation, you know. Is that a moment uh, which is actually asking for fairness, which is asking for um, uh, a reinterpretation of uh, uh, sort of the Nehruvian model of uh, India? Well, I mean, I don't know about the Nehruvian model, but I'm saying it is a reinter maybe it is a reinterpretation and it is fair to have reinterpretations because we've been brought up to think a certain way you know some of us and the books say something um but it depends who you're speaking to sometimes and in you know a country that's obviously indian and a majority hindu country living in you know in india 
will want to hear their point of view. Now, why should they want to hear an English point of view or a foreigner's point of view on, yeah. on, on things? So, I mean, I think that's absolutely fine. So Seth, needs, before we let you go, we needs, have to ask you. Sorry, I'm just saying a lot of history needs revision, actually. Even the West is doing yes. it. I mean, Tarantino is doing it. I mean, just the concept of kind of like, you know, there's many things that we've taken uh, for granted because we've been told that's how it is. And a lot needs to be yeah. revised. Right. So um, uh, that's interesting to hear, Seth, because sometimes we tend to uh, get so polarized in the debate between left and right, we tend to ignore some of the good things that perhaps the right wing is also in a way trying to tell us. I mean, uh, it's very difficult to be uh, emotionally and intellectually honest today, isn't it? Well, I don't know about that, but I'm saying um, before judging, you know, a, a certain school of thought, um, you've got to understand what the ground reality is. This, like, because there's yes. inequality in the country, there are people who certain issues are much more important than to people sitting in ivory towers in very comfortable homes talking about other things. Of course, issues like freedom and censorship and all those things, are because the intelligent people have seen what happens when dictatorships take over or all these kind of things. So alarm bells yes. are rung and people do talk, but you've got to understand, like in a developing nation, I think everything that's happening um, is kind of bound to happen and is very understandable also. You know. What is the one thing that you'd like to do the minute the lockdown ends? Uh, travel, go to shoot, to shoot a movie, mm -hmm. to go to work, yeah. to go to work. That's the first thing I'd like to do is to start filming. I'm missing working. Do you have, do you have something lined up immediately that you yeah. can talk about? Absolutely. I mean, no, there's that movie Booth Police that has been, that's lined up. I've still got Bunty Bubbly Part 2 with Aditya oh, Chopra yes. on the floors, which is coming along really well. And we just had 10 days left. Um, and then we got, you know, blocked. Um, there's, there was something we were talking to Netflix about. Um, there's various things. There's actually lots of work uh, being planned. And there's Delhi where your cast is a politician. I'm looking forward to that. I hope so, yeah. The one by Ali Abbas Sakun. That's right. It's a nice show. It's quite well written. It's a little, uh, you know, it's got all that politics and, you know, um, drama and murder and sex and violence and all that kind of I love uh, that. I love stuff. That. What else is there, right? <laughs> Of course. I mean, uh, politics and sex in one place. I mean, there's nothing quite no. like it. That's for Amazon, right? Yes, that's for Amazon. Great. Uh, so before we let you go, Seth, uh, uh, we have to, of course, ask about Taimur. Um, and of course, how much joy he brings to the whole country. But um, uh, how have you been uh, occupying his time and how have you been um, you know handling him I think all dads would want to know well you know he, first of all he's at a really easy age a little oh, well, I, I mean you know I've got a nephew as well I mean Karishma's son is a little older he's nine he's playing a lot of video games it depends on the personality this kid right. is quite easy going and they're very adjusting children as I'm sure everyone knows uh, you tell him he has to wear a mask and he's quite happy to do that um, okay. and he's understood that there's this thing called the coronavirus and that he needs to alter his life he's also missing running around in the park but he's really helping us by being um, just very easy uh, he's got a routine he's doing some online studying you know he gets on his iPad with some teachers and some other students and they kind of talk then he has some Lego creative classes and he does some gardening with us and some, you know, like I said, some cooking. He makes obviously something uh, inedible with salt and water and uh, apples. Um, but, uh, you know, so he's just involved with everything. And then we read to him and he's really keeping right. us sane as much as, uh, as much as, you know, we're trying to bring him up. So it's a, like I said, instead of complaining about the time, this is an important time where both parents can kind of um, 
impart their great knowledge and wisdom to the child. Great. God knows. Thank I hope we don't so make a, I hope we don't make a complete mess of him in lockdown. Thank you so much, sir, for being with us and for being such a wonderful conversationalist. It's so rare to have good and decent conversations these days amid all that shrieking and shouting that goes on. So you know, thank you very much. I've had your number for years. I think you used to review films, didn't you? Some, or do yes, you still do? I did. I did. So India and one, one of them was quite nice with me. I can't even, <laughs> I remember. I was like, okay. You were, so thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. We had a wonderful conversation Great. and uh, thanks very much and uh, congratulations to Karina again for 20 years and uh, yes. uh, we'll see you we'll see you when uh, you do 40 years in no 30 years in cinema. Okay. Soon. All right. Okay. Thank you. See you. Bye bye. bye.